glad that you tuned in. In this video, you're gonna learn on how to use TrainingView. Understand the basics, understand the tools, and also how to apply these indicators on your charts. So let's get going, let's get started, and I hope you enjoy this. So the first step to do is go on Google, let's type in TradingView, and once you type in TradingView, it's gonna be the first one on the search. So click on that, and that right there will take you to the homepage of TradingView. And so once you're on the homepage, you will see that you have a, a get started here link, and once you log in, that is just where um, you sign up and also select the plan. So those are different plans. So, so let's sign out and let's go into that get started and let's show you here. So here are the plans and for me, I pay annually and on this, it's either choose essential plus or premium. So for me personally, all I need is the essential and that's all I need and I make hundreds if not thousands of dollars on stocks. So go for the basics, there's nothing wrong with it, but if you wanna go for advanced features, then go for the plus or the premiums. All right, so what we have here pulled up is AMD on TradingView. This is a stock that we're looking at on this charts. And so from there, it's like we want to get familiar with what we see on this screen. So just to get started, let's see what this bubble is about. So let's click that. And once you sign up into the plan that you purchased, it will pop up right here. And so for me, just like I mentioned, I go for the basic package, with the, which is the essential. So that's just what it is, as in what I'm currently running on, my username, and also you have all this um, tabs here, which is home, help center, notifications, what's new. The dark mode right now is I'm running dark mode. That's just why it's toggled on and also the drawing panels, which is all this here. Um, the language that I'm currently running on is English because that is what I'm going off of. Uh, I can do Espanol, but we're good on English. So also if you wanna do keyboard shortcuts or if you want to just download the main TradingView app, then it will be right here. So, and if you wanna sign out on TradingView, click that red tab and it will sign you out. And then later on, you can log right back in. So now this toolbar. So this toolbar is very important because this is the things that you're going to use when it comes down to you either drawing, outlining certain areas, certain levels, or certain notes that you want to add onto these charts. So think of this chart like a whole drawing board and you can add whatever you want to just to understand more about the way market is moving and also what to expect within the next move. So here, what you have is this whole mouse option. So right now we're currently running on the cross. And if you don't like the cross, you can change it into a dot. You can do it a arrow or you can do an eraser. So for me, I'm going to just keep it default. And that's just what I'm running on, which is this whole cross. Uh, the next one is my favorite because this is what I use when it comes down to either me going off retail concepts doing wedges, pennants, bull flags, um, and overall just these patterns that goes off retail. So what I use mainly is this whole trend line because that trend line, I can draw a trend line like that. I can draw a trend line this way. I can use a trend line, a trend line that's going off like that. And what I like to use is that when price is just rejecting some sort of area, I like to add on a trend line and enter at the breakout or if price is bouncing off and creating some sort of channel, falls below, I can enter and I'm showing in the market. Or if I'm going to off support resistance, and let's just say this is resistance, price hits that resistance area and it rejects, I can profit on the market going down. So this is the number one uh, feature or this is the number one um, tool that I like to use when it comes down to me charting. So let's delete that real quick and let's move forward. So the next one is I use the extended line. So on the extended line, let's just say that if I don't want to draw in a whole extended line on the charts, then I'm going to use this extended line because this extended line will just go from where's, wherever you click to the right hand side. So let's just click that and let's do that right there. And there you go. So let's just say, for example, if price stopped here, pulled back, I'm not going to enter until price breaks above that. And this can take something like this, something like that until it finally breaks loose. And that right there 
is just going off of a resistance that we were looking for a breakthrough. And that is just what, you know, this feature is. So, or if you just want to go for a full line across your chart, then that right there would be your horizontal line, which is this right here. And there you go. Draws a whole line across your charts. The next one is the vertical. The vertical would be a line going from the top to the bottom. And let's just say that you're going to use the vertical lines when it comes down to either session breaks or when the market is going to open and close. So let's just say if, for example, if I just draw a line right there, I'm not going to trade until price crosses off that white line and then I can be a participant after the cross. So that is just what this whole white line or this whole vertical line is for. For me personally, it's just I use it for session breaks or just to divide certain sessions. So that right there is something that you can uh, start using if you just want to divide your charts. Um, the next one is we can add on, uh, no, none of this. I, I really don't use none of these because this is not what I use or teach. So for me on that part is I just use a trend line, extended and the horizontal and the vertical, and that's it. So you can just see all the favorites that I have there is the ones that I use. So, but yeah, uh, next one, the Fibonacci. Fibonacci is what's talked most a lot about a strategy that you know people tend to use but for me i use it based off supply demand and that is just me going off refinements so the way that i use these um, fibonacci's is that i look for price to come in some sort of 50 percent mark and that right there would be my entry and that's just going off of some sort of supply and demand so if price comes into some sort of uh, demand or supply in this case is a supply i like to use that fibonacci slice that supply and demand or supply in half and put on the Fibonacci and enter right at the 50 mark to get that sniper entry. And so that is just what I use that Fibonacci for. So let's delete that. And let's go on to the next one. So the next one would be um, none of these. Again, no, you will see that most of the tools on TradingView, again, it's like you wouldn't use. Why? Because you just use the main ones or the ones that goes, goes off your strategy. You don't have to use all of them. Remember that you don't have to use all these tools. Again, it's just up to you if you need it. Um, the next one, do I use this column here? No, I don't. I use none of this and that's just why you don't see it part of my favorites. So um, if you do Elliott waves or if you do Elliott wave, um, you know, uh, strategy, then you can see that that is just what, you know, um, it will go off of, right? So uh, for me, I don't do Elliott wave. What I just do is that's price action, supply demand, and white off. The next one, the projection, meaning that's where do you expect or project for price to reach at? So for me, I like to use these tools when it comes down to my teaching phases. So let's just say, for example, if price is breaking above a high and I have some sort of pullback into some sort of support level, and right when price comes into support level, I'm going to use this long position to show my students where am I going to add in my stop loss and also where is going to be my targets. So let's just say if I'm going off AMD and we're at the 118 or the the um, the 80 mark, let's say, let's just say 80. And the moment that price is at the 80 mark, I have a stop loss under, let's say, at 72. And right at the 72, if price crosses below 72, I, I get stopped out. But where I'm trying to enter is off the 80 mark to target the potential 120 level, let's say. So you can see it's like, I use this tool for me teaching or when I send out outlooks or some sort of analysis based off my signals. So let's just say I'm going to enter off the 80. My, pro, uh, my projection for AMD is to hit the 120 mark. And that's just where you see me create this whole um, long position because I'm using this long position because I'm betting on the market to go up, not down. So that is just what it is for. Um, same thing within the other one, which is this whole short position. So I'm using this whole short position for price to come up into, into a specific area. I enter here, stop loss wherever I'm comfortable with, and I'm betting on the market to go down. 
and that is just where I'm expecting price to hit to is to see new lows. So that right there is just what I use um, within the long and the short. So let's delete that and let's remove all the drawings. So the next one, um, I don't. I also use a price range and also the date range. So the price range is just to calculate how much of a stock Forex or crypto um, has moved, either if I'm based off price, points, pips, um, and that really depends as in the markets that you're currently working with. So since I'm doing stocks, then that would be go that would be going off a certain price. So um, that is just what the whole price range is for. Now the next one is the date range. So you can just see is like when I get the date range, it's calculating based off the days, the weeks, and the months. So in this case, what I can say is that let's just grab this little portion from this low to this high. And I'm going to do it just like right there. So that is 151 days on that whole run up. So within that whole run up, you had 151 days to look for buys to take out the, um, the previous high and aim for all time highs. So that is just what it is. And also the amounts that you would have on that move would pretty much just be, let's just say right there, um, 120 right? 120. So 120 of a price movement from down here to here is an insane move. But yeah, that right there is what it would be using these tools. So again, you have a lot of tools on TradingView. Use the ones that you're going to use and, you know, stick with it. The next one, um, that's it pretty much. Oh yeah. Also there's a date in price range. So if you want to connect these two together, then you have this option too. So the next one, drawing tool. If you want to draw, then perfect. If you want to draw a smiley face, you can as well. If you just want to draw some sort of pennant, just like this, perfect. If you want to draw some sort of wedge, um, let's just do something like this. Price is just in a wedge, breaks lower, perfect. You just you draw a wedge off just using um, the drawing tool, the drawing feature, and now you shorted the market just using simple drawings. Or let's just say, if I want to write a note for myself, just, you know, 92.2, uh, or I can say that this is my stop loss, or this is my PT here, or maybe if, if price is just, you know, in some sort of consolidation, I want to circle out every single area that had the rejections, the bounces, and that right there is just where I'm going to use my analysis and create a whole game plan off of that. So again, the drawing feature is something that's very useful when it comes down to, you know, you marking out things. So for me as a mentor, I like to use a drawing tool because I pretty much draw, draw all over my charts just to uh, show them what am I looking at and what is my analysis and what is certain areas that has crazy rejections or a bounce and what to look for. So, but yeah, so mainly I mainly use those drawing features or drawing tools to show my students on what I'm looking at. So let's delete all that though, and let's move forward. The next one, the brush and the highlighter is the same thing, but if you want the highlighter, it's just much more thicker, and there you go. So delete that, it's the same exact thing. The arrow, so let's just say if I have some sort of, you know, supply, that price just broke above, what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to add on a arrow to show my students that I'm gonna look for a pullback in here. And then we're gonna look for a long inside that zone to go right back up. So those are just what those arrows are for. So mostly again, these drawing or these tools is just for me um, uh, to teach my students. So also arrow marker, or if you just wanna use a simple arrow, there you go. And if you want to change the color off of that, you have this, click it, and you have this, you have this, and you have this. So let's just say that if you want to turn it white, perfect. If you want to change the, the width of it, you can do 1px, 3px, or 4px. So for me, just keep it simple. Just one is fine. I uh, don't need to make it crazy. But yeah, that's just what it is. Um, same thing here is just basic arrows. So if the market is going to go up, I'm going to tell my students, yeah, the market is going up here. 
look for that whole run up. Or if the market's going to go down, I'm going to do the opposite. It's going to do this, right? There you go. The next one. This is my favorite one, which is the rectangle, because what I do is I teach my students that I'm going off supply and demand and using those rectangles is pretty much the most tool that I use when it comes down to me using uh, TradingView. So let's just say I got a nice break of a resistance and now I have a nice supply and demand, which in this case, it's a demand zone. And I'm going to look for price to come into that rectangle that I just drew because this is the last down push before the market went up and I want to look for the retest and this is just what it is. I'm going to look for the retest and I'm going to look for longs and then go higher. And that is just what I'm using that rectangle for because I'm using it based off supply and demand concepts. And now the opposite would be a rectangle that I drop at the top. And now I'm going to look for price to do this and then reject right back down and then we short the markets. So those are just what I use those rectangles for the next feature. The next feature is the path tool because I use that path tool to show my students that where is the market heading to? You can see how it's just making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, lower lows, higher high, higher low, higher high. What's the next step to look for this pullback and meet a new higher high. Okay. So maybe that might happen on AMD. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that could be a possible outcome on AMD to look for a pullback into here. And that right there would be a nice supply and demand going off that rectangle just like this. And there you go. We just used those tools on this chart. So that is just what the whole path tool is, is to use it based off market structure or just to see where that trend is heading to. Also, if I'm finding areas where there is tons and tons of rejections. So let's just go on a one hour time frame and let's just find uh, something like this. And let's just use a trend line. And within that trend line, we find areas that there was crazy rejection. So I like to use that circle mark or that circle um, tool. And I'm going to show my students. This is where I see tons and tons of rejections right here off this trend line. And so be careful because price can just reject and just fall to the downside. Now the opposite, let's just use something like this. I'm going to show my students that there is bounces in here bounces in here, bounces right here, right there, a bounce right, um, let's just say right here. And there you go. I'm showing my students where is that price bouncing off of and where in that trend line. Um, and yeah, so again, use all these tools to understand how can you create a bias, an outlook, and just do deep down analysis when you're looking onto a chart. Let's remove the drawings and let's move to the next one. So the next one is, I mean, I don't really use anything as of that. Uh, yeah, that's just pretty much it. So the ones that I have started out is the main ones that I use. So the next one is the T. The T is just what stands for the text. So if I want to write down for a note for myself, let's just say AMD is at 174. I'm looking for price to break above. 176 to look for longs or price just made a new high and I'm looking for a retest and there you go right so we just set and created a new for ourselves using the text um, feature and we put it onto our charts and there you go right so it's just notes that you're adding onto the charts on you know what to look for when it comes down to you doing analysis again on that chart um, also, you can have callouts. You can have price labels. If we, you know we're currently holding an area where there's tons of rejections or tons of bounces, add in that price label, share it out, share those levels, or just keep it there for personal use. Uh, smiley face. You, you can add emojis if you want to. You can add a you know cool symbol. You can do a it's hot. <laughs> uh, you can do this is rallying up to the upside, throw a rocket on there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is your charts, make it unique. And this is just what it is when it comes down to you marking out things on a chart. 
So ruler, I don't use any ruler or measure feature. Zoom in, you can zoom in if you want to. But again, for me, I don't use that. All I do is on my laptop is just use the trackpad and just swipe my two fingers up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so next one. Um, I don't use none of this uh, because all I can do is like, let's just say, I mean, the only one that would be is that if I just draw random areas, let's just draw drawings, let's do highlighters. And if I just wanna hide that and not delete it, you go on to this one here, hide all drawings and it just hides. So you can just see it, it has an eye symbol, but it just crossed. So if I want to unhide it, just click it again, it would put it right back there. Uh, but let's just say if you wanna delete it, this is just where the whole trash bin feature is. So click that, and you can see that we have three drawings. We have the highlighter, we have the trend line, and we have the brush tool. So delete all that and remove everything. So it just delete it, deletes it. Um, next one. Um, the indicators. I'll go over indicators, but again, you have indicators or you could just remove and reset your whole charts. They will remove the drawings and also the indicators. But yeah, so that is what it is off this whole toolbar here on the left hand side. So now next we have this search button here. So you can see that this is what we started off with with AMD. But let's just say if I want to look at NVIDIA, I'm interested in NVIDIA because it popped up on my radar or my news then I'm going to go on NVIDIA and type that in. Or let's just say if someone is talking about Apple in the Discord, then I'm going to go off Apple in the Discord and, or I'm going off Apple and we're going to look for, you know, um, some analysis or create analysis behind that stock and move forward. Or let's just say if someone is mentioning SMCI, which is Super Micro Computer Inc. Look at this. It's just going parabolic at, at the moment, making a very, very, very crazy impulse move. So that is what this whole search button is for. But yeah, so this goes for any financial market. If you do stocks, crypto, Forex, commodities, uh, bonds, indices, whatever, right? So let's just say, for example, if I want to go on US 30, there you go. We just put up a US 30 market. If I want to go off Forex, let's just do your USD. Your USD is the same exact thing. Um, let's just say gold. Gold is the same exact thing. So let's just say, you know, we want to do, um, you know, all USD. Odd USD is the same exact thing, right? So, um, but yeah, this is just what it is. So let's just say if I want to go on Doge, uh, Dogecoin. So Dogecoin off the Binance. There you go. <laughs> the little dog feature there. So this is just what the whole search button is for. And all you're doing is just looking up the stock, the crypto, or the forex pair that you're looking at, and do your research. And now the time frames. So all the time frames are here, but that's just going off of me um, selecting each one as a favorite. So you can see that right here, we have all the second time frames. but for me, I can't use that because I only have the, um, the essential package. But if I want to use these um, second time frames, then I need to go and buy the premium package, which is the $49, $59 uh, dollar package. But for me, I don't need it. All I need is just this one minute time frame. So if I just click that, you can see that, yeah, I have to upgrade, but I don't want to upgrade. And all I do is just use the one minute and above. So if you want your time frames to look like this, then what you do here is just click this one arrow in here and go on to this one arrow down. And you have all the time frames in here. But let's just say if you want to add specific ones, so on you on your chart, you would have defaults from one, five, 15, 30, one hour, and above. But if you want to add in certain time frames, you go down here, scroll all the way down and type in what uh, minute, what hour, what day, or what type of month you want to add on. And then from there, click the whole star um, mark, and that right there would just pop up right here. So that is just what the timeframes are for. And yeah, make sure to use it. So what these timeframes are for is just to understand, you know, what is the market doing on that day, that week, that month, or maybe on that, you know, lower time frame um, um, session, right? So in this case on Dogecoin, on this one minute, you see what price is consolidating on this one minute time frame, and now price is up here. So technically speaking, this is an uptrend right now. So Dogecoin is rising up. But if I go on to let's just say, you know, a four hour time frame, look at this. It just looks horrible. It's just going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. If I go on a monthly, this just gave you one big shot up and one big pullback. So, but yeah. 
Um, but yeah, now the candlesticks. Now the candlesticks is this is a whole candlestick that you, we are currently you know running on. But if you want to change it, then you can use the other ones here as well. But yeah, for me, all I do is the candlesticks and the line graph, and that's it. So I just want to see how does the market look on the line and how does it look on the candlestick? I don't use none of these here um, because it's pointless for me. So if you use these other ones in here, then use them, right? By all means, use it. So I don't use that. So I just use basic candlesticks and line graph, and that's all, that's it. So uh, moving on, the next the next tab here is indicators, metric, and strategies. So for this one, all I do is just use the indicators. So I already have some sort of favorites in here at the moment. But let's just say that if you want to use EMAs, type in EMAs, the moving average, exponential, and there you go. EMAs. So if you want to have more than one EMA, double click this, triple click this, and now you have three. So each time that you add on an indicator, it pops up right here on the left hand side under the ticker. So um, let's just say if I want to do VWAP, if I want to do the volume weighted average price, do that and it'll pop up, right? Um, and also, once you have all this full, uh, filled, maybe you just want to hide it or maybe you want to delete it. So let's just say we want to hide the VWAP. Hide the VWAP. There you go. We just hit it and turn it right back on. Click the I button again. If you just want to completely delete it, ho hover over it and just click the X mark and it's gone. So let's just say if you have all these three EMAs and you just want to delete two, delete two. And there you go. Now you're holding on one, right? So. But yeah, that's just what the whole indicators is for. So if you have a special indicator or if someone is uh, mentioning you a nice indicator that they're going off of, type it in right here and click the search button and go from there. So now the next one is the alert. So if I want to create alert on Dogecoin, I can set alerts when price crosses above this area in here, 0 0.09. So actually 0 0.07906. So 0 0.07906. So I'm going to sell our alert up here. And the moment that price crosses above that area, my whole phone is just going to, it's going to go crazy. It's going to notify me that Dogecoin is crossing above. So you can set and customize your alerts, crossing up, crossing down, less than, entering to channel, moving up, et cetera, et cetera. So I just put crossing, click enter, and there you go. It sets an alert there. And so the moment that price crosses above this alert, I'm going to get you know notified on my phone, on my laptop, whichever device that's connected to TradingView. So let's just say for the next one, the next alert would be down here. And if that right there would be 0 .0, 0 0.07760, then that's what I'm going to go off of. So let's just look at that up again. 0 0.07759. So 7 five nine there you go so now we have two alerts for either for this to go up or for this to go down and each one means something different so either to, for us to short it so let's do something like this and let's just use the um, the tools that we just covered here there you go look for downside and now look for let's just say that we're going to use the other one we're going to use this to expect the market to rally right back up again um but yeah, so you can just see it's like we're also using the features or we're also using the tools to to identify what can we expect and, you know, how those drawings, you know, honestly helps us. So now the next feature, if you want to start back testing, back testing, meaning that you want to test your strategy, your support resistance, your confirmations, your um, your key levels, how you confirm, then what you do here, if I want to go back in time and then I can do something like this. And all we do is just, you know, um, uh, cut it up. We use the scissors and now we're back in the past and it's like pretty much a time machine. We're now back into February 2nd of 2024. And there you go. Practice your strategy and see on how you could have entered within that area, either to go short or to go long. And that is just what the whole feature is. And now it's like, if you want to use the, um, the tabs down here is to, you know, have it played out and just like that. Right. So uh, it's a good um, tool to use to st test out your strategy. So let's just say if I now, um, you know, add a level here to add a level here, I'm going to look for a breakout here to go long. Let's just see what happens. 
No, it didn't. So it chose this level down here and just went short. So there you go. So my support resistance, it's either go short here or go, go long above here. And there you go. Price broke below and now you're shorting the market. And there you go. You're making money. So now the next one, this rewind button. So let's just do something like that, this. And if I want to hit the rebound button and I want to, let's just say undo this, this is what the whole undo button is. It undoes my drawings. But let's just say if I want to add that right back on my charts, then click the redo and there you go. So let's delete that though. And let's remove the drawings. So also before we move forward, if you want to, you know, um, get into shortcuts, right click this reset chart view copy the current price uh, paste object tree the color theme if you want to change it back to whites or dark it's up to you and um and yeah you also have to remove the drawings and also remove the indicators so you don't have to go on the far left hand side so that is just what it is now the next one the next one would be um this right here right? Take a snapshot. If you want to share your charts, take an image, download it if you want to copy the image. So the copy is just pretty much, it's like a um, copy and paste and you don't have to download it. So just copy the image, share it onto, you know, if you're going on discord, just right click it, hit paste and it just, you know, share the whole image. Or if you just want to copy the link and we want to share somebody the link, then send the link and they can see what you drew, what you, you know, you have and what's your analysis. Or if you just want to tweet the image, connect your Twitter accounts into TradingView, and that's on how you're going to tweet. So the now the last one, just to wrap this up, is how can I change the background and how can I change the candlesticks and also the extended hours if you are going off of you know um, the stock markets. So let's go back into let's say Hood. So Robin Hood, and there you go. So let's right click this. And there you go, you have chart settings. So this is all the settings on your charts. So you have symbol, status line, scales, canvas, trading, and events. So for me, the only ones that I pretty much just use is the symbol, um, uh, the canvas, and the trading. So within this, it's like, if I wanna change the color stick, the, if I wanna change the candlesticks colors, you can see that right now I'm going off green and red. So look at all this, you have all this green and you have all this red. But if I want to change it into different colors, then I'll just click this and I can select different colors. If I want to change the red uh, candlesticks, that means bearish, then I can change it into, let's just say black, white, whatever. So let's just do white. There you go. We just changed it into white. Um, and now if you want to mess with all these other ones, you can, but for me, I don't. Um, but yeah, so again, it's up to you. This is your charts and you know, you do whatever, you know, helps you to read the markets or to read uh, these charts. So now, this one, the data modification, the session, you can see that we have after hours, which is post-market and pre-market. It's collecting the data. It's showing the data. How is the market moving once the market is closed? Because the market is open from my time, Eastern, 9.30 to 4 p.m. And anything after 4 p.m. or before 9.30 is a session or is a time that we can't trade if we're doing option um, trading. If you wanna use the extended hours, then by all means, leave it on. But if you don't want to use that information, then just use regular hours and it just deletes the whole, you know, the gray shaded area. So, but yeah, that's just what it is. And also the time zone, since I'm going up based off the New York time, this is what I'm going to select. And whatever time zone you on, then make sure to select the time zone to adjust the times. Um, status line, status lines, just to edit whatever you have in here the logo, the title, and things like that. So for me, I really don't like to mess with anything like that and just leave it there. Uh, canvas. So canvas, if I want to change this whole background into, let's just say white or some sort of, you know, um, solid background, then I just put it like that, right? So again, it's up to you. This is your charts. This is what you want to, you know, um, adjust if needed. Um, also the grid lines. If you want to add grid lines, then you can right? You can add in grid lines if you want to. And there you go. It just adds on lines on those charts. So it's like dividers, uh, text, white lines and things like that. But again, for me, I'd really don't mess with anything of that. So, but yep. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like subscribe and call me what you want to see next. 
Um, if you want to see more beginner videos, if you want to see more of my strategy, how I enter, exit, or how I live trade, make sure to let me know in the comments on what you want me to post next. Um, but yeah, other than that, take care and happy trading. Peace.